Uh, welcome to my home, the San Francisco Bay Area, and welcome to ICANN's 40th public meeting, our largest in history and our eighth in North America. We meet today in a vibrant center of innovation and technical accomplishment. San Francisco and Silicon Valley are home to many of history's transformative ideas, as Peter mentioned, where technology and inspiration join hands. Here, an idea can grab the imagination, take root in just months, and begin to change the world. Ingenious devices, applications, and online services developed in Silicon Valley allow you to watch the streaming video of the session and post the blog you've just written. You can use your mobile phone to tweet your disagreement with my speech. You can use your iPad to tell your friends you don't like my tie. They will know within seconds, no matter where they are in the world, if they're connected by the internet. Thanks to the amazing technology and solutions, so many of which have been developed here in Silicon Valley. Think storage, networking, graphics, mobility. They all rely on basic semiconductor technologies developed here. Think Facebook, Google, Apple, Twitter. This is the place they call home. The internet is the greatest communications tool in the history of mankind. It is changing the world by facilitating the spread of ideas beyond national borders, enabling human freedoms, stimulating economic growth, enriching cultural diversity, and nurturing the seeds of innovation and social change. And the internet is helping those around the world who feel marginalized to raise their voices and to be heard, not just in presidential palaces, but far beyond their borders. I was once lucky enough to acquire an exceptional bottle of wine. It was an 1820s Madeira, made of grapes grown during the lifetime of President Thomas Jefferson, one of America's founding fathers. The dusty green bottle had large air bubbles in it and an ancient cork. It had been preserved in a private wine cellar in New York that dates back to the 1700s. A few years later, I was invited to dinner with President Clinton, and I brought along that bottle of fabulous wine. That night, I had the extraordinary privilege of toasting William Jefferson Clinton, our 42nd president, with the wine produced during the term of our third president, Thomas Jefferson himself, when he was still alive. It was a magical moment. Jefferson not only loved wines, but had a strong knowledge and passion for debates, for a debate on the issues of the day. He was a voracious consumer of information and believed that a well-informed public was a cornerstone of representative government. I cannot live without my books, he famously stated. I know many of us can relate to that. He was a wealthy man, so he was able to build a fine collection of rare and important documents in a beautiful library that he designed at Monticello. Now, through the global internet, Two billion people have virtually instant access to more information than the human brain, even Jefferson's, could process in a lifetime. And the contents of his library could easily fit on a small thumb drive in your pocket. Imagine if Jefferson were alive today to benefit from this resource. I bet he would be online and fully engaged in the critical issue of internet governance and independence, some of the most important strategic challenges of this age. As David G. Post wrote in his excellent and engaging book, In Search of Jefferson's Moose, if Jefferson were alive today, he would probably be working on the design of internet governance structures. He might even be with us right here in this room at ICANN 40. Issues of governance and independence remain key factors in ICANN's relationship with the US government. The Clinton administration was instrumental in the formulation of ICANN in 1998 as a not-for-profit public benefit corporation. The administration saw that the internet would become a global resource and envision a unique model that would welcome global voices to the debate on its future. ICANN was thus conceived as a private sector-led, multi-stakeholder organization to coordinate the domain name system that the world has become increasingly dependent upon. As ICANN's formation evolved during the Clinton administration, so too did the Governmental Advisory Committee, recognizing the legitimate role of governments in public policy issues involving the domain name system. We are honored to have President William Jefferson Clinton join us this week. 
He will speak at 6 p.m. on Wednesday evening in this room, and I hope that you can attend. And I'm delighted that a pivotal player in ICANN's creation, Ira Magaziner, has joined us here this morning. Ira, welcome, and thank you for all you did to help make this organization a reality. Creating ICANN required not just vision, but courage. The inclusive multi-stakeholder model that is now so basic to our work was a breakthrough concept 12 years ago. It wasn't widely accepted, and it is still under threat today. It is built on openness, inclusion, trust, and collaboration. Among internet governance operational bodies, these principles are woven into real multi-stakeholder processes, as you well know. The multi-stakeholder model can deliver superior policies, actions, and decisions because it leverages the intelligence at the edge of the network, harnessing the collective wisdom of the internet ecosystem and its specialist participants and groups. Groups such as the internet service providers, domain name businesses, local internet communities, governments, internet standard or standards organizations, the regional internet registries, individual internet users, nonprofits, and businesses around the world, and many others are all welcome here. And we benefit tremendously from this engagement. And ICANN actively engages with all of them because we believe in a simple principle. Everyone with an interest in, in the internet should have an equal right to be heard in its governance. Policy development structures should be shaped across bodies of expertise and shared interests. And those competing interests must be balanced, as they are, by the ICANN Board of Directors. The multi-stakeholder model is working. How do we know? Because the internet works. It works on behalf of the world, and it brings diversity and richness of thought to the governance of this primary and very precious global resource. Is it messy, loud, slow, frustrating? Yes, sometimes. It's in our communal DNA to debate, to examine every issue in excruciating detail and sometimes beyond. Some who do not get the decision they sought may occasionally express their frustration through calls for reconsideration or for further accountability and transparency or other reviews of process, of which we have many, and it's good. And we hear them too, because the multi-stakeholder model works and the global public interest is served. And when all voices are heard, no single voice can dominate an organization, not even governments, not even the government that facilitated its very creation. The success of the model established with such foresight can be measured in many ways, most visibly in ICANN's years of reliable and successful coordination of the route, thanks to all of you. ICANN takes its stewardship of this function very seriously and through continuous improvement has maintained a high level of performance and stability as the number of daily DNS queries supported through this community has grown exponentially over the last decade. Excellence and predictability of IANA services are critical to the future of the internet. Root management and DNS coordination serve the community of nations and are critical to the preservation of a single, unified, internet. One of my most important responsibilities as CEO is to listen. And in our multi-stakeholder community, that means hearing a very wide range of voices from private companies and NGOs, from the technical community to the world's government to average users. Since I became CEO almost two years ago, I have listened carefully as many in the community at our public meetings and around the world have expressed concerns about the structure of the current IANA contract. Some say the agreement is not international enough. Some express the view that it's too short term and that this erodes institutional confidence in ICANN and the model. Still others feel that the US government's limitation of the IANA agreement to one year suggests a stopgap arrangement, whereas the global internet, ICANN and IANA functions demand reliability and predictability. Some believe these functions could be better handled through an intergovernmental organization, as Larry mentioned. Others disagree with that proposal vehemently. Rather, of course, Larry disagreed vehemently, and thank you very much for that. Many in the community have called for greater transparency around root processing, 
looking for clarity on what happens between the time ICANN hands off a route change to the U.S. Department of Commerce and when that change is given to VeriSign for incorporation into the route. These views are often coupled with the belief that the U.S. government should live up to its 1998 white paper commitment to transfer management of the IANA functions to the private sector-led organization entrusted to manage the DNS, which is ICANN. The Department of Commerce has recently issued a notice of inquiry or NOI in preparation for the renewal of the IANA contract, the fifth iteration since ICANN's formulation in 1998, as discussed today. This is the chance to add your voice to those determining the fate of the IANA function. If your voice is to be heard, you must speak up. Whatever your opinion, we hope that you will express it openly and in writing. Please take full advantage of this unique window before it closes and make a difference in the future of the Internet. Each ICANN meeting is an opportunity to report on our achievements in increasing our transparency and accountability. We have a strong foundation to build upon, but there's always more work to be done. And we're building on it throughout ICANN, in every department and in discussions with every community organization, not only to meet our own goals, but to surpass the standards of transparency and accountability as demonstrated by other global institutions. For example, the public wiki launched in December to track and document action on more than 800 board resolutions, every single resolution in ICANN's history, now includes the rationale for each new one. And those resolutions are now posted in five UN languages. So for the first time ever in our history, we have every single resolution posted publicly in a wiki with information on how that resolution was followed, on, was followed up on or not followed up on, whether it was funded or not funded. All of that information is fully transparent and online to the world. We've also raised the bar for public reporting of staff activities and information. For example, a metrics dashboard provides detailed information on internal operations, including performance indicators on registrant protection, global participation, finance, and internationalized domain names, among many others. And the recent board GAC consultations in Brussels were conducted transparently, with almost 100 observers in the room and many more connected online. This powerful dedication to transparency is helping us to fulfill the obligations in our bylaws and in the affirmation of commitments. That groundbreaking agreement affirms ICANN's independence and commitment to making accountable and transparent decisions in the public interest around the world. It also commits us to reviews by the community, including the recent accountability and transparency review. After nine months of intensive work and almost $1 million of support, the accountability and transparency review team has issued 27 recommendations. They focus on four areas. The board, including the nomination committee's selection process, the governmental advisory committee, public input and policy development, and review mechanisms for board decisions. Some recommendations relate to work that our staff is already doing, and the review team has provided useful guidance for this. Some recommendations will require new resources, and several will involve decisions by the board and other groups and bodies in the ICANN family. We are assessing ICANN's ability to implement the recommendations, which is largely the responsibility of the board, the nominating committee, the GAC, and supporting organizations and advisory committees. In essence, all of us, the entire ICANN community. The board has asked staff to propose a way forward for each recommendation, and where practical, to provide preliminary work plans and budgets. This week, the board will consider the 2011 to 2014 strategic plan that will guide the budget and operating planning process that is already underway. Many of you have been involved in that process as it began early last fall. A fiscal year 2012 budget and operating plan will be publicly discussed here, and ultimately the community and the board will decide which ATRT recommendations should be included. We will, with, we will respect the affirmation's deadlines and provide the detailed analysis along with our advice to the board which must take action on all of the recommendations by June 30th. Now, that was a lot of process and deadlines and budget, so let me be very clear. 
We intend to fulfill and, wherever possible, exceed our obligations under the affirmation of commitments subject to receiving appropriate resources. Not just on transparency and accountability, but on the upcoming recommendations of the WHO IS and security and stability and resilience reviews as well that are also part of the affirmation of commitments. And the review of promoting competition, consumer trust, and consumer choice that will follow one year after the launch of new GTLDs. These international community reviews reinforce the concept that internet governance is our common responsibility, and we will do our best to ensure that they are successful. The internet belongs to no country and to every country. It belongs to all of us. ICANN's relations with governments and other international stakeholders continues to advance. That doesn't mean we will always agree, nor is, it the, nor is that the goal. What matters is the serious, respectful, and positive manner in which we engage with each other. We listen and consider each other's views. We can never make too great an effort in this respect. We can also enhance our relationships through greater community participation and policy working groups. And in the spirit of transparency and accountability that we have all embraced, community participants should also be transparent about the interests they represent. The recent board GAC consultations in Brussels on new generic top-level domains are good evidence of these deepening relations. They demonstrated that the multi-stakeholder model is viable and that the GAC has an important role to play in it as reflected in the ICANN bylaws. The meeting was held in a spirit of cooperation and mutual respect, transparently and openly. We listened carefully to the GAC's advice, and we will do so again this week. Another example of strong international collaboration is the ongoing effort to ensure the continuance of the Internet Governance Forum. The IGF is an effective building block in the governance of the global Internet. Its future which looked so shaky just months ago, has benefited from a series of collaborative international efforts. And while it is not guaranteed, it has moved onto a more promising path than what might have been, thanks to many of you. A working group of the United Nations Commission on Science and Technology for Development, which will propose changes that will affect the IGF's next five-year mandate. ICANN is participating as one of the five technical community representatives on the working group, and planning is underway for the Nairobi IGF, the last to be organized under the existing terms. The IGF is a communication forum, not a regulatory negotiation. It serves as a valuable platform for a wide range of stakeholders to exchange their views, and ICANN fully supports the extension of its mandate. In Miami a few weeks ago, I was part of a diverse group of internet leaders who met to acknowledge an historic milestone. The allocation from IANA to the regional internet registries of the last address blocks of IPv4, the internet protocol that has been largely changed for 35 years since Vint and other colleagues develop, developed it. The expansion of IPv6 is far more than a technical advance. It is a vivid illustration of the internet's amazing growth and an essential path to the future of continuing communication and innovation. IPv6 offers a quantity of addresses beyond the human imagination, trillions of times larger than under IPv4. There are more IPv6 addresses than stars in the universe, literally. Full adoption is essential to ensure that the internet has room to grow to accommodate the Internet of Things and the ideas we haven't even thought of yet, the ones your son or daughter may be dreaming up right now on their smartphones. And for their vision to become reality, we need global adoption of this new protocol. IPv6 is the platform for tomorrow's technology. Once we deploy it fully, the future will be limited only by the boundaries of our imagination, not by the absence of Internet addresses. Nothing in our work is more important than keeping the Internet's domain name system secure, stable, and resilient. It's our primary mission. Threats remain and continue, including technical threats and political developments around the world. 
ICANN conducted its fourth annual exercise in early February, this time on LROOT operations, demonstrating our commitment to fulfill our DNS charter. Together with our partners, Asia Pacific Top Level Domain Association, the Internet Society, and the Network Startup Resource Center, we conducted a secure registry operations course in Hong Kong during last month's joint meeting of the Asia Pacific Regional Internet Conference on Operational Technologies, NAPNIC, the Asia Pacific Network Information Center. This was an opportunity for in-depth training with CCTLD managers on best practices and operational security, furthering our commitment on DNS capacity building with regional TLD organizations. This, week, I, this week's ICANN meeting includes a separate track that links all security-related events, such as today's DNS Abuse Forum, the Tech Day, hosted jointly by DNS Operations Analysis and Research Center and the CCNSO, and the DNSSEC Workshop. This is an easy way for you, you to identify and engage in security-related discussions. We also welcome the law enforcement community members participating here, including Interpol. Our continuing collaboration enriches the multi-stakeholder model. In partnership with the community, we will continue to do our part to help coordinate community-supported security and stability efforts and to serve as a resource in addressing threats to the DNS. Perhaps our most significant security achievement is the ongoing implementation of DNSSEC. With strong community support, it is being vigorously deployed around the world at a pace that exceeds our projections. We encourage country companies to deploy DNSSEC on their DNS infrastructure, in effect to turn DNSSEC validation on and assign their companies domain names. In less than a year since the route was signed, today we have 76 top level domains signed and in a few weeks .com with almost 100 million domain names will also be signed. With the root zone and many TLDs signed, the number of domains using DNSSEC will accelerate. Large ISPs such as Comcast are deploying DNSSEC to provide additional security for their customers. And major equipment vendors such as Cisco are looking at building it right into their products. This is a major win for DNSSEC. And finally, DNSSEC could help secure more than just domain names. Perhaps email, websites, identities, communications, and programs, bringing seamless and trustworthy communications across organizational and national boundaries. For those of you who may not be fully aware and knowledgeable of DNSSEC, there'll be a session for newcomers today at 4 o'clock. The Latin American and Caribbean TLD Association has set a target of 50% signed TLDs in Latin America by the end of this year. 2011 will be the year of DNSSEC for LAC TLD, according to its general manager, who is here with us today. We want to hear that commitment echoed around the world. We also continue to see progress in advancing the new generic top-level domain program. For some, that, prog uh, that progress is not fast enough. For others, it's far too rapid. But we're not in a race. We're considering a significant change to the world's primary communications tool. We do not do that lightly. We have invested five years of intensive efforts collectively. Getting it right is much more important than doing it fast. The Governmental Advisory Committee and the Board of Directors met in Brussels two weeks ago with three concise goals. To clearly identify areas where differences remain, to work together to bring those items to resolution, and to move the process far enough forward that a decision to launch would be within reach. It was a very constructive session. We're not there yet, but we've made significant progress on a number of these differences. There are remaining issues, and given the extraordinary nature of the topics and the opportunities presented, we have provided extended sessions for the board and the GAC to meet this week. No matter how the outcome is viewed, the collegial spirit of engagement shown by all parties in Brussels is a demonstration of the multi-stakeholder model at its best. And the long-term work that has gone into preparing new generic top-level domains has had a welcoming side effect. It has made ICANN a better institution. The long and inclusive community-based process has broadened our views. It has engaged individuals and organizations 
that had not previously engaged in ICANN, and it established more collaborative relationships among existing constituencies and stakeholders, including the GAC. The next step for new GTLDs is here in San Francisco, where the board and GAC will participate in further consultations to ensure the GAC's public policy advice has been fully considered. Internationalized domain names are an eloquent testament to the power of inclusiveness and collaboration. Perhaps the greatest praise for IDNs since we met in Cartagena is that they have so quickly become ordinary. IDNs are an amazing achievement, a profound change to the internet and a core part of rapid globalization. They have opened the door for billions to access the internet in their primary language. Naturally, we like to shout that out from roof rooftops, all the way from Hong Kong to Qatar. But as each new IDN enters the route, it seems less exceptional. That such an accomplishment should be considered normal and not worthy of much notice is the loudest endorsement of the program's success. Under the fast track process, we've received 34 requests for consideration of IDN country code top level domains. 17 countries and territories now have IDNs in the internet's route. They include Arabic, Chinese, Cyrillic, and Indic scripts together used by over 3 billion people worldwide. We are also undertaking the, the first annual review of the fast track process to ensure that it meets the needs of the internet community and users. This morning, you've heard from an architect of ICANN, from one of the founders and fathers of the internet, from the assistant secretary of the US Department of Commerce, and the former White House deputy chief technology officer and first employee staff member of ICANN. What an impressive group of distinguished individuals linked to the development of ICANN and the internet that have provided such a broad, pensophic vision of what we are up to and what we have gone through and, and, and some pointers on where we're heading. We thank you all. And I now have the honor to address you, ICANN's dedicated community, and to thank you for your active engagement, which is the very foundation of our multi-stakeholder model. I also thank you in advance for sending your thoughts to the US government in the next few weeks on how this model, which works so well already, can be, be improved even more. Whether you believe that's in the form of a cooperative agreement or a continuance of the current procurement contract or something else, whatever your thoughts and opinions are, we urge you to share them, and we applaud the Department of Commerce for opening up formally to the world's input. This is the moment for you to be heard on ICANN's future and the future of the Internet. Please speak up, whatever your view is, about the multi-stakeholder model of global Internet governance and how you would like it to improve, because your voice matters. You have until March 31st, only a few days, not so many until the end of this month, to express your opinion by responding to the notice of inquiry. We urge each and every one of you to please do so. Thanks once again for participating with such dedication and enthusiasm in ICANN and its public meetings. Let's make ICANN 40 a fun, respectful, and productive week. Thank you very much.